Hi, this is Saveriana, and today I have a very special guest cooking with me. Amy Fothergill, um, with the Family Chef. She is uh, a consultant, she teaches cooking classes, and she has a specialty in gluten-free cooking. I think her family is uh, gluten intolerant or sensitive, and uh, that's one of her, uh, I think, interests. So today, um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me here, I'm very excited. Um, I'm going to be teaching Amy how to make arepas, and she's going to be teaching me one of her favorite recipes. What is it that you're making? I'm going to make the sweet potato, black bean, and onion um, filling, and we're going to have some lovely flavors of cumin and coriander. This is something I make for my family, usually more like a chili, and I just thought it would be really good. And I love arepas. I've been eating them for two years, but I've always been a little scared to make them, believe it or not. So I'm so excited to learn how, because I think I'll love them. Good. So we're going to make the arepa, which, as you know, at Pica Pica, we fill them with traditional Venezuelan recipes. Um, but we're going to experiment, and we're going to fill it with one of Amy's favorite recipes. And we're going to see what happens when we use her filling with our arepas and taste it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be delicious. I so why don't I just show you a little bit about the arepa and how to make it. Um, we use uh, harina pan, which is a flour that we bring from Colombia, made by a Venezuelan company. Um, a note, the label says that it might have traces of gluten. We've had this tested. It is um, considered gluten-free, five parts per million. Uh, so essentially you take the corn flour, add, flour uh, add water, salt, and that's it. And where do you find this? You can find it at Pica Pica or <laughs> at Latin markets, in the Mission or in the South Bay as well. And what if you don't have the pan, if you can, don't have access to it, are there other alternatives? So you can use uh, maseca or masarepa. Um, they're not exactly the same. Oh, all right. Two things. Granularity is different, so the tortilla flour is slightly coarser, and the taste is not exactly the same. However, it works just fine. So it's the corn that. flour. So let's go ahead with it. Uh, essentially, you do a one cup or one part of flour and one and a half parts of water. This flour soaks up water very quickly, you'll see. And Diana, it looks like you've been making this for a long time because you're like me, you don't measure. <laughs> but really, you know, look at me, the recipe. <laughs> Frankly, I, uh, I grew up um, making arepas, like every Venezuelan, really. No, I'm like that with Italian food, so I understand. And I think that's important with cooking is to give you a little bit of freedom. And there's recipes, but so much of it is the process, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, absolutely. And you get to taste it and to sense it. And in this case, it's a texture thing. Um, you're going to notice that it's very much like Play-Doh, which is something that I love because I make these with my kids. Um, you're going to see, I'm going to show you how. Essentially, you're just making little burger patties, and you can make them any size. I do silver dollar um, size for my kids. We fill them with cheese or eggs in the morning, and uh, that's our pancake breakfast morning. I could see this with uh, sautéed chicken or even with, uh, you know, ooh, thank you, ground beef. You can fill it with anything. Think of it as a pita bread or a corn oh gosh, uh, this tortilla. So this is so cool. <laughs> so I make a ball. Okay, the ball first. Sorry. The ball. And then you flatten it. Okay. Like a hockey puck. What is a hockey puck? <laughs> Something that looks like that. Okay, like so puck. like a hockey puck. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? This is too dry. Okay. So you see how it's because a little it's bit. It's cracking. It's okay. cracking, and you do All not right. want to crack. The arepa. Another important thing as to why you want it moisture is because you're going to cook it and of course the water is going to evaporate. Um, so you just add the water and if for any reason you run out of flour and it's too watery, don't worry because the water will evaporate. Okay. That's also good to know. It's always good to see the what happens if. Right. Okay, so just a little bit of kneading. And usually people let it rest for about 10 minutes. Notice, um, I don't know if you noticed, I added a pinch of salt. Oh, it is salt, okay, great. Okay, this is a little bit better. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, I feel the difference you now. Do? It's a little okay. stickier, but um, it's still not sticking to my hands, if you notice that. So, okay, so you make ball. a ball. Ball. Mm -hmm. Then you pat it like you would a, a burger. Or a hockey puck. Or a hockey puck. <laughs> <laughs> when I make a pie crust, this is how I eat. Okay, and there's you know there's a song when you're little. I did pita de manteca. Can we look at the difference before when I made the patty? It had cracked, and now it's completely flat and it's nice and smooth. So that's a really good indicator. Thank mm -hmm. you for that tip. I love things like that. So then I love to just 
kind of do this with my hands. I mean, Just to round it. I think so. That's perfect. <laughs> For a novice. So obviously this is something you can make at home if I can make it with you right here. Absolutely. So this is it. This is an arepa. Now what you do with it, several things. The first thing you do, you seal it. So you put it in a pan. I love this now. And the reason why you seal it is because you don't want it to lose shape. All right? Um, now, from here, you can do a couple things. One is, you can leave it in the pan until it's cooked. Let me rephrase that. The flour is pre-cooked until it's done. Essentially, what you're doing is giving it a crust that's crunchy, and in the inside, it's gonna be moist, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, you know that the arepa is done when you take it, and when you tap it, it's hollow. Okay, how long does it have to be in the pan just to give it that seal, about? About two minutes each side. Okay, and the pan has to be hot, that's important, right? Yes. Yes, okay. So then, Say that you do not want to eat it uh, right away. Okay. You can let it cool. Mm -hmm. And once it's cool, wrap it in saran wrap. Okay. And you can free, uh, refrigerate it. You can refrigerate it for a couple days. And then what you do is you put it back on the pan. You can put it on the grill. Okay. Or you can bake it. If you're going to bake it, how long and for what, what temperature? So it's about 300 degrees. Oh. And when it's about brownish on the outside, of like golden brown, um, that's about when it's ready. But again, if you don't know, just grab it, tap it. If it sounds hollow, that's a good indicator. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you're gonna refrigerate it and use it a couple days later, corn ferments. Uh, three days later, it's gonna taste slightly different than it did the first day. There's nothing wrong with it. In Venezuela, people like that taste, but it's an acquired taste. Something to keep in mind. So how about, while well, we're making the arepa, how about you talk a little bit about your own recipe and tell us what you're doing. Well, when I cook, Making my saute, the first thing I'm going to do is get my pan hot. It really is important. It gives you a good sear. The pan is hot. This is why you're using a pan like this, <laughs> which is either a stainless or aluminum or something. Uh, the Teflon tends to give off a smell, sometimes some fumes, which is always so pleasant. Pan is hot. Often while the pan is heating, because I'm a mom, I'm always on the go. Multitasking is my name. I will cut the onions while the pan is heating. This is a nice uh, small chop. When I cut those onions, I have left the core in, and then I take the skin off and make some slices. I go the other direction, and it's very nice. So it doesn't fall apart. It doesn't fall Great. apart. Great, that's really easier. helpful. So uh, let's go ahead and get the pan a little bit warmer. Let me talk about the spices. My oil, this the cumin, smells so yummy and delicious, and it's a really nice flavor. It's not too spicy also. For and I love that you're using cumin because that's a key spice for Latin cooking. So, you know, there will be some crossovers. <laughs> yes, there will. Um, I love coriander, that's another spice. The other tip with the spices is to buy them in bulk at a grocery store that sells them in bulk. It'll keep much better. If you buy the containers that are about this big, it may take you a year, unless it's you're here. It may take you a year to go through that, and it won't taste as good. So if you buy them bulk, you just buy maybe a tablespoon or two and then refill it. I do that, it really helps with the flavor. Uh, chili powder, this is a spicier chili powder, so we're just gonna add a little. For my children, they don't like spicy food, so we'll just put uh, a little bit of that or we'll use a less spicy chili powder, which is easy. I love adding oregano. Um, when you pinch the oregano, I'm going to uh, crunch it a little bit and I'll bring out the flavor, some pepper, and then for afterwards we have the uh, queso fresco and cilantro. So my pan is warming up and I um, like <laughs> Adriana, I don't measure, I look at things. So you wouldn't put in a half a cup, you wouldn't put in even a tablespoon, maybe really just a teaspoon. And the way so that it you doesn't know, stick. So it doesn't stick. And the way that you know it's ready is when you put that oil and you see the shimmer and you see it already starting to move around. It's yep. not smoking. And it's not again, sticking. It's not sticking up. Just a handful. This is a small pan. We're going to give you the recipe. Oh, I love that sound. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> The onions. That's what your onion should sound like when you hit the pan. Right, so yeah. when you're on the blog, we'll have the recipe with all the measurements so that you can actually follow the recipe and get the perfect taste. Yeah. So, I, again, a little bit of cumin. I like the cumin flavor probably the most. It's so nice with the sweet potato. And some coriander. If you don't have coriander, it's not a big deal. Just put in a little more cumin and the chili powder, something, whatever is to taste. And remember with the oregano, as you're putting the oregano in, pinch it between your fingers and now bring out the aromas. And while this cooks, I'm going to talk about all the other ingredients. And then we're going to put in some pepper. Nice bit of pepper. And we can always add more. I'm going to give it a little shake. And that's 
I, I really don't, I'm so hands off when it comes to cooking things like this. I want the pan to do the work. So at this point, this is when I'm helping somebody with their homework, I might be checking an email. I don't stand over the stove and stir it all the time. I call it step away from the stove. And this way you'll get a nice caramelization, really nice flavors in that pan, especially when we add the other ingredients, it'll all come together. So you haven't added, added any salt? I haven't added salt, that's the other thing I wait. If you add salt at this point, salt extracts the moisture. And if it extracts the moisture, it'll start to sweat and it will be wet. And I really like the browning. I like the flavor of the browning. And it will be caramelized. Exactly. Right. So I add the salt just about at the end. Let's talk about the other ingredients. Uh, I use sweet potatoes today. That's what I had. I, my kids love sweet potatoes. If you didn't have sweet potatoes, you could use white potatoes. You could use butternut squash. And you could really, you, know, you don't have to put it in. It's more about the other flavors. You could just use the black beans. You could add more protein to this by adding tofu if you like. Oh, that's a good idea. And this is very simple. I just pre-cooked the sweet potato in the microwave. You can boil it, you can bake it, and a little bit of a dice, just like I did with the onion, a nice flat. Um, the way I did the sweet potato, I cut it in half and then made slices one way, slices okay. the other. Black beans, that's what I had on hand. You can use pinto beans, you could use garbanzo beans, anything that you like or what you have. And that's a lot of my style is really making things easy for people. And I just feel like cooking, just get in the kitchen. It's so much fun. Your family will enjoy it. Use some good techniques, but don't be so tied to recipes because cooking should just, you should just feel natural. I, I, my, my cousin, who's way of the same blood, and she's like, I say to her, I want to give you the forest. Use the forest. She's like, I don't have it. I'm like, Why? come on. And she's like, give me the recipe. Um, I also have some chopped diced tomatoes, and we're gonna add just a little bit of that to sort of give it some texture. Okay. It'll almost uh, make it, like I said, like a chili. So notice, this drives people crazy in my cooking classes. I haven't touched it, and I do have a spoon, but I'm just gonna give it a little shake. And already we have some beautiful browning. Gorgeous, and the smells, this is where we need the smell vision because we can smell the cilantro. Yeah, or the, it's very the, aromatic. The Cuban and the coriander. Um, just delicious. So we can let it go a few more minutes just to move things along. I'm going to add some sweet potato, put that in first. We'll let that cook for just a moment or two. Again, we're going to wait on the salt. And when, you know, you have a recipe, so much of cooking is looking at your food. And I might say, oh, it's a quarter cup of onion, it's a quarter cup. But I can just visually look at that and say that's about the right amount. I'd say so. That's the way I cook, the way that I learned to cook. But I do know that some people will not approach the kitchen if they do not have everything measured out exactly. I know. I know. So well, that's why we'll have the recipes for you. So that's why. A little, little saute. Pay no attention to the flying onions. You know, I like to look at a recipe, look at the ingredients, get inspiration, and then just go with it. Some people, like my husband, he needs the book and he needs to just have everything perfectly laid out and then he'll do it and he'll be like, you see, I'm a perfect cook. I'm like, of course you are, you know, so am I. <laughs> so there's no way of doing it. Yeah, no, it's, um, again, that's why I call myself the family chef because I know that moms are so busy and it's really hard to you know, try to get a good meal on the table quickly and that's healthy, that's so important to yep. me. And um, I try to give them that freedom to let go a little bit. So this is why this is a, a great recipe. So I'm gonna put in the black beans. Maybe a couple of spoonfuls of that. And now, some tomato. Not too much. Ooh, I love that sound. And now I'll stir it. Yeah. Smells delicious. I love the combination oh. of the tomatoes with the spices. I feel like I'm getting a, a human facial right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to see how this tastes like inside of the areva. So really just heating, I, would, I like, I notice the texture, it's what I would call wet, so it should go really nicely in the areva because if it's too dry, I think it might. But you don't want it overly liquid uh, because then it'll fall out of the sandwich. Okay, so a little bit of salt now, it's a flavor. About that much, not too, too much. And I think we're just about ready to go. One thing that's important to note about this recipe is that everything is cooked already. So essentially you're assembling and bringing together the chemistry of the spices. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it could be ready now, it could sit and gather more flavor, but you're not waiting for the chicken to be done. Right. Right? Exactly. And that's the nice thing about this. It's, it's kind of all pre-made. Let's add the cheese and the 
see that. Okay. <laughs> I try. I try to speak my little bit of Spanish. <laughs> You know, what's nice about this, if you didn't put the cheese in, then it would obviously be dairy-free. Of course. And these breads are dairy-free. Yeah. That looks perfect. Right. So do you want to let that sit? Sure. Okay. Remember, we talked about having the arepa. You seal it in the pan. Then you finish it off on the grill, oven, or on the pan itself. In our case, at Pica Pica, we like to finish it off on the grill. So think of this as a pocket. When you cut it, you're going to cut only half of it so that you leave this half closed so that the filling will not come out. Okay. So notice the thickness of it. It's thicker than a pita bread. It's thicker than a tortilla yeah. because you got to cut it in half. So essentially, you just very carefully, you're going to go in and you're going to open it. Ah, and that's it. Great. You see? Turn. That's the pocket. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. We'll go past. Let's make sure we get it in. Yeah, that's... Okay. She gives me the crusty one. <laughs> I can put it flat so I don't cause an accident. But I can feel, I can feel okay. the that's knife good. is right uh -huh. there. Let me just make sure I've gone all the way across. So that might be a little easier for you to put it on a cutting board to do it. Good just point. You're not, you, so you don't cut yourself. Your <laughs> right. So then you see, if you open it like this, just give it some, it'll, it'll give. And then you just open it like that, like a little, it has its own mouth. So essentially, let's take this delicious filling. The texture seems perfect. Possibly something new for Pika Pika. <laughs> Possibly something new for Pika Pika, absolutely. Wow, check this out. The colors are amazing. Red, orange, white, green, black. This looks awesome. And one thing that I always teach my um, customers, and I even teach the children this, is how color correlates to nutrition. So your orange potato has more nutrition than the white potato. The red of the tomato, it really does make a difference. And if that's how you can eat, that's great. Are you ready? Ready, <laughs> set, go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it came out pretty good. That's perfect. It works. And it's not overly liquid. It's not falling out. It's very, delicious. Very hot. <laughs> it's very, very delicious. I'm really happy about this. All right, Epa. It is really versatile. You have just seen it. This is proof of it. If you want to try it yourself, download the recipe, make it yourself. And you can also check my blog, which is thefamilychef.blogspot.com. I'll also have the recipe there in the video and some comments and little notes and realize how easy it is to make the arepa and I encourage you to try to make it at home and come up with your own fillings. Do what you like. Maybe you just want to do sauteed chicken. You want to, I would even put a ta something Italian in there, um, like a shredded pork, anything. Anything, yeah. So if you try anything fun and you like it, please email me, let me know what you did. I'm really curious to see how you use the arepa as your new vehicle for delicious recipes. Yes, especially for gluten-free, because what a great idea instead of using regular bread. Absolutely. Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>